Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. Hola y bienvenidos al episodio 19. Welcome to episode 19 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. Last week we talked about a full cultural immersion experience with Latin music, dance, travel, and more with the director of Aventura Dance Cruise. Now this week we're continuing our theme of cultural immersion in our conversation with Carlos Cinta. Now I caught up with Carlos at the Baltimore Salsa Bachata Congress and he is a dance instructor, DJ, and music editor. He's most known in the dance community for his expertise in musicality, especially when it comes to bachata music from the Dominican Republic and staying true to the genre's roots. He is definitely not known for biting his tongue, and he does not shy away from controversy in this conversation. We talk about everything from how he became so passionate about bachata to cultural appropriation. Now, he also shows who is his favorite bachata artist, and he talks about a unique opportunity if you want to learn more about the Dominican Republic and become completely immersed in the culture, meet the people, and learn more about the music. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Carlos Cinta. Vamos a empezar. Carlos, thank you for joining me on the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I want to just start out for our listeners that may not know you. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and your background, where you grew up? All right. Well, Carlos Cinta, I'm from, uh, from Chicago. I focus more, when I teach bachata, I'm teaching more about the musicality, about movement, you know, teaching people how to move their bodies and be more playful um, when they're dancing to try to get, you know, away from counting music and instead and, and understanding what's happening more so they can feel the music uh, when they're dancing. So that's that's more my specialty, my bread and butter. And for just a clear misconception, because I know some people that do know you, they think that you are Dominican. But mm -hmm. what is your background, actually? Yeah. So my mother is Mexican and my dad is from Ghana. And it's funny, even though I tell people that I'm not Dominican, they just refuse to believe me. <laughs> Like, no, I'm telling you, I'm not Dominican. No, yes, you are. Okay, well, yeah. all right. You get to be, you're an, you're an honorary Dominican. Um, I will, I, I'll, I'm honorary Dominican and Puerto Rican, Caribbean, yeah. Okay. But, I'm, but yeah, no, it's like, I'm not, I'm not Dominican. So, since you, you're from Chicago, and you said, so you're Mexican, and your dad is from Ghana, so how did you become so involved with bachata music and Dominican culture? You know, um... In, in 2009, when I was living in San Diego, I, because, um, you know, San Diego is a big military town, so there's a lot of Caribbean people there, you know, stationed there for the military, mm -hmm. and uh, just hanging out at the Dominican club a lot, and we would always, and on Saturday night, and then Sundays, we would all go to the park and play softball together, so just hanging around the people of the culture uh, was a new experience, and then, you know, seeing how they party to their music and, and the type of songs that they listen to. You know, just, they're just loud and screaming and talking and yelling and just having fun. And, you know, that's that, that's kind of more, you know, the culture that I, that I like and I feel comfortable in. Um, so it was just fun hanging around them. And then in 2010, I went to the Dominican Republic for the first time and really got to see the culture firsthand and, you know, the way of life and and, and how people were. And, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was really nice, you know, and it just, I, um, I just fell in love with it. So what is it about the culture exactly that you connected with? And you said you had friends, you connected with the music, but when you went there, what was different about that that really made you connect more with uh, the culture of the Dominican Republic? You know, they're, they're really warm people, you know, very welcoming, very inviting. The culture, again, is a lot about music, live music, you know, party, fiestas, uh, a lot of food is involved. Mm -hmm. And then there's sports, there's baseball. I'm, I'm a baseball fan, so okay. I grew up playing it. And um, so, yeah, food, music, and sports for me is, those are my three go-tos, and that's what they do a lot on the island. You know, the, the food is also very fresh, and, you know, you got the beach if you like the beach. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a really cool place. I like it. 
Well, so what's one of the biggest misconceptions you think people have about the Dominican Republic? So for people who haven't been there, and they might just kind of know from what they hear in the media or from what people say. So what do you think is like one of those misconceptions out there about the people that live there that you would want to clear up? You know, like it is a third world country, that, that's true. But there's, there's, there's so many beautiful places, you know, waterfalls, so much, so much, there's so much beautiful nature out there. You know, again, it's just, it's just, you go there and you experience different things, you know, people, you know, coming from, you know, concrete jungles and cities and cars and Ubers and this and that. And then you go over there and, you know, you're walking, you're on the buses, but, you know, they call them little wawas. So you're not on like a big Greyhound bus. You're on, it looks like a little, um, like the, 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 the Scooby-Doo, the Scooby-Mobile or whatever, you know, <laughs> they have buses too, but, right. you know, a lot of them, you know, you're on the little Scooby, little Scooby-Doo mobile and or you're on the little, they call them motoconchos, you know, you're on the little, looks like a little dirt bike kind of, right. you know, and that's their, their taxis and how they get around and it's like, or you're on horseback, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not going to lie, me getting on, on a horse was very awkward and everybody's just laughing at me and I was like, look, nah, I don't know how to get on a horse. <laughs> So it's not, just, not too many horses in Chicago, Not right? too many horses. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it was just different. But, again, there's a lot of cool experiences. And you, what I like is that uh, you learn to appreciate what you do have when you come back to a first world country. Mm-hmm. For example, electricity. For example, right. uh, hot water. You know, uh, able to, you're able to drink the water from the sink over here. You know, where you can't do that over there. Or, you know, it's discouraged. So... Internet, the Wi-Fi, you know, again, first world problems. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but over there, you know, you really, it's kind of one of those, oh, the internet's not going to work today. You, you put the phone down and you, instead of looking down, you see what's in front of you and it's like, wow, there's all this beautiful nature and life in front of you. And you pay attention to that and it's like, man, this, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. Right, and I know for me too, I know when I visited Dominican Republic, I noticed, like you mentioned, people are just warm. And even despite all that, like everyone's still in a good mood and having a good time. Not right. that there's not challenges, but right. like you said, it's like, okay, well, the Wi-Fi's down, let's go party. Like it's right. not going to stop, you know, people from enjoying themselves and having a good time. Right. Yeah, over here, the Wi-Fi's down, it's like, oh, come on. You know, what <laughs> right. am I going to do now? Go outside? Right. Oh, go outside. No, it's too hot. It's too cold. It's too this. It's right, too that. You know? right. Again, first world problem. So switching gears a little bit, I want to talk specifically about bachata. So for those who may not be familiar with, maybe they you know, are more familiar with like salsa. Maybe they know about like Mark Anthony and those type of artists. Uh, could you talk a little bit about what is bachata music and what actually you know makes bachata what it is? I think bachata is more, it's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a culture. It's... Again, now this is just my opinion, um, but you know, from just from what I what I've seen in my experiences, you know, going over there, it's you know, it, but it, it's struggle. It, but at the same time, it's you know, there's, there's it's heartache. It's but it's happiness. You know, it's it's, it's joy. It's peace. You know, you, you you get all of the emotions. You know, sometimes you see you know at the at the at the discos, you know, grown men crying, like crying, but you know, it, from Songs remind them of a, you know, a certain woman that left them or, you know, something like that. So there's, and then at the same time, the next song, you can see everybody partying. Hey, 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 you know, just having a good time. So it's, it's a roller coaster of emotions, but it's more than just, you know, step, 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 tap. You know, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle and it, it is life. They live and breathe it, you know. And again, not, not to be clear, not all Dominicans, you know, like bachata. It's not, it still, you know, has some reservations but you know and, and it's also from what I've been told more of a, a capital type thing you know um, what meaning in uh, Santo Domingo is, is more you know or further south on the island but you know I'm sure it's everywhere you know I haven't been everywhere all over the island but it's, it's just a, it's a way of life you know and not not a way to make money or to travel the world it's life could you tell us a little bit about sort of where bachata came from? So you mentioned the experience of being in DR and going to parties where you see people where one song is very joyous or one song might be very sad. Um, but then when you sort of hear bachata as it's become this worldwide phenomenon and you hear it all over the world. Um, I know I had an exchange student from Spain a few years ago and she actually told me that she listened to Romeo Santos and I was shocked. I was like, wow, this little island in the Caribbean has created this culture that's gone around the entire world. But what is sort of the difference between what people may have been introduced to in more like modern bachata or bachata as it's become more popular versus sort of the origins and the roots of the music and the feeling behind it when it first started? I, th- I think the sound is different. 
it depends on where you're at and where you party. Uh, it will depend on kind of what sound you hear or what sound they, they force feed you. Mm -hmm. But in the industry that I work in, a lot of music that is played for the people, for the masses, is more music engineered by DJs and music that is engineered by, you know, producers, not necessarily by chata artists. You know, so that sound is basically completely stripped down of all the the original elements of the bachata instruments, which we would have, you know, the bongo, the huida, the bass guitar, the second guitar, the lead guitar. You know, a lot of those instruments are stripped down to make the sound more pleasing to somebody that's not familiar with the culture, somebody that's never been there, or somebody that's just not Caribbean at all. Um, you know, again, to appeal to the masses. And, you know, again, it, it's business, so it is what it is. Um, but I, I find that in, in doing so, you know, you're appropriating the Dominican culture and you're stripping all of its history and all of its roots, but still giving it the same title and the same label, which is where I think the problem is. Like if, if like I, I always say the product isn't the problem, it's the labeling of the product. You know, if you go, I don't know, to buy orange juice and you it's labeled orange juice, but you get apple juice, you're not gonna be happy. Not that you don't like apple juice, but the labeling, I wanted orange juice and right. you gave me apple. Mm -hmm. That's not okay, you know? You know, so the, the the songs recorded before and the songs mainly being recorded in the island, I think there's more emphasis on the lead guitar, more what they would consider quote unquote mambo sections to where it's a lot more, you know, music just jamming, um, like a freestyle jam session. Mm -hmm. um, that is more prevalent in the music that, that comes more from the, the, the artists from the island to where the songs recorded off the island, you know, a lot of stuff in New York, Europe, you know, wherever it's recorded. Because there's more R&B and hip hop influence and just American pop culture influence, they they don't put a, a lot of emphasis on the lead guitar and it's more on the bass guitar, more sound effects, a lot smoother feeling. You know, again to to make it more, uh, I guess, palatable for the ear as opposed to the the more twangier, higher pitch sound mm -hmm. of the stuff that comes from the island. So that's just the differences in the music. But you know, and, and people will say, well, you know, the music is evolving. It's, you know, the music's changing. I said, well, technically true, but the way that they mean it is incorrect because the music isn't changing. Again, DJs and producers are changing the music. And that is something that is completely different. And I don't feel that that's fair to, you know, the, the Dominican culture because you're stripping away all the instruments and all the feeling and still giving it the same title. Right. And, you know, I was going to ask you about this too because I know I've heard it mentioned a few times when I've been out dancing even where people will say, oh, that that's like Dominican bachata or like traditional bachata. Like there's all these other labels, like there's all these sub-genres people have created <laughs> for the music. And there's some people who I know who have told me, oh, I don't want to dance to that like traditional or that Dominican stuff because mm -hmm. it's like, it's all this footwork and I can't mm -hmm. do all of that. So you talk about that. Is there a divide in the dance community over that? There is a very huge divide in the dance community for business purposes, I feel, what is sold, and I put sold in air quotes, what is sold to a lot of people is that, you know, again, that quote unquote Dominican bachata is footwork. You know, it's all footwork, you know, shines. And it's, it's, it's just unfortunate because, you know, and then, and then the two main stereotypes is, you know, the music is super fast and the footwork syncopations are, you know, really tricky and really fast. And in the parties, you know, again, a lot of DJs will, oh, play a quote-unquote, you know, Dominican song. So they think I have to put a song, you know, 160 BPM or faster. And so if you got the fastest song on the planet plus the most complicated syncopated footwork sequence on the planet and you try to do them together, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So people get discouraged and then they leave and, oh, I'm just going to, that stuff's stupid. I don't like that. And then they just build this wall. But it's just that it, it hasn't been introduced to people properly. You know, again, they're, they're sold that it's, you know, all this flash and, and, and tricks, but it's not. It's about movement. It's about playfulness, enjoying the music. There are slow songs. There are medium tempo songs. There's fast songs. But those, you know, again, the the slower ones are never played because there's this myth that, oh, I, well, I have to play something fast. You know, so it's just, if they would learn it properly or if, if DJs would play the music properly, then I think that people would be more open to it. And I, and I always tell people, you know, go to, just just go to the regular Latin club or go to a Dominican club or whatever and just see, 
you need to be to really understand it. You need to be around the people of the culture. Like you need to be in the beep with the people. Right, I don't know if right. it's you know fam- <laughs> a family. I, I beat myself out. You I know. appreciate your uh, self beeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but like you, you need to be in it with the people to really understand what it is to them, and then be like, oh okay. Appreciation appreciation comes with understanding. All right. So if you don't understand something, you're not going to appreciate it. If you don't understand what goes in the making tamales. You just, uh, you know, whatever. But when you sit there and you make it, and there's a big pile of masa, and that stuff takes seven hours, eight hours, you're like, oh, oh, never again. Like, I appreciate the hard work. If there's, you know, people don't understand American football. Oh, that's, these guys hitting each other. That's sports stupid. But, you know, I play it and I coach it, so I understand all the strategy that goes into it. It's like, no, it's more than that. But now if you, if you have just, you know, the basic understanding or somebody explains you the rules, and they're like, oh, okay. Well, now I understand it. Now I appreciate it a little bit more. Not saying that you have to be 100% enthusiast, you know, but just have just have a little bit of understanding of what what it is to the people of the culture, and then you may appreciate it uh, a little bit more. Yeah, you know, you make a good point because that's something that I share with people. So because I've been to Dominican Republic as well a few times, and I've been to Santo Domingo, uh, Puerto Plata, Santiago, so. You know, even within the island, there's differences in the culture. But one thing I did notice, and I shared it with people when I came back, especially a lot of the dancers who learn bachata in like a studio, yeah. right? And they're like, oh, you know, one, two, three, tap. And, you know, they're very like focused on that and like doing all these body rolls and dips. And I tell them, you know, I went to DR, nobody dances like that. Not only does what you're doing not look like anything that they're doing, right. but. All this, like, oh, I need to have my dance shoes, and I need to make sure this and the floor is, like, where's the powder? Like, none of that happens in the DR. Like, people are literally just having fun. They're dancing in, like, whatever conditions. Like you mentioned, when you're trying to find Wi-Fi and electricity, you don't have time to, like, make sure you have suede bottoms on your shoes, right? So, like, there is definitely that disconnect. And I think you're right. Until you actually experience that for yourself it's really hard to, for someone to just tell you right because yeah. it's like they're preaching at you like oh you right. need to but you really have to have your own experience i definitely agree with that and even like you said i think there's also a divide between not only just you know within the the dance community but just the actual community of like for instance there's like a latin club where that's where people actually hang out and then there's a dance studio where people teach latin dance Right. which may or may not be connected with the community, you know, to different degrees. So it is a different experience when you're going to, like, a social that's at a dance studio versus just actually going where people hang out. Right. Like, and I think if you, you know, as a dancer, even just as a person, just learning about culture and, and not wanting to fall into that cultural appropriation trap, I think just going and learning about people, talking to people, yeah. hanging out with them, and then you really get to see what, what the music and culture really is. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. So I want to switch gears a little bit, get a little out of the controversy, and I want to talk about sort of your passion for bachata, right? Because you talked about how you connected with the people and sort of traveling as well and going there. But I want to know from you know from the music standpoint, what is some or what are some of your favorite artists? Give me some like some of your favorites for people who are looking for something for their playlist. It, it all really depends on the mood of the situation, but. Yeah, that's you can think about it, right? Yeah, that's that's tough. So I, I, I've narrowed it down to I have two favorites, and when I say favorites, it's more like, you know, like there's, there's one thing to have a good game, mm-hmm. and then there's one thing to be like Jordan, where like every game is gonna be either really great or better than everybody else's good. Right. You know, so like pound for pound, for me, the goat slash greatest of all time is uh, Raulín, Raulín Rodriguez. He's just man. Because he's got so many albums, and each one of those albums, there are more than half of the songs on there are just good. That's a, you know, sometimes people have albums, you know, two songs are good. Right, right. The rest are like, eh, eh. Yeah. The majority of his albums, I, well, with all of his albums, the majority of the songs, like, oh my gosh, that's a banger. Ooh, another banger. <laughs> Listen to this one. It's just so many of them. And so. And it's, 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 I think it's more the consistency. Right. Like, one album isn't trash and then another one is good. Like, the consistency of consistently putting out great hits for me. He, he's my no, he's my favorite. I'm a big Luis Miguel and Amarque fan. Very, I, I think he goes overlooked a lot. Um, seeing him live, he, he's my favorite one that I've seen live. I haven't seen everybody. I haven't seen Raulín live. Um, but of the people that I've seen live, he's just, again, just his songs are, a lot of them are just danceable. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know, re- really good songs, really good, you know, lyrics, good composition. It's just, I, I love his music too, you know. So, they're, they're, I mean, obviously, you know, you're Anthony Santa, Louis Vargas, you know. Um, I, I owe a lot of credit to, you know, John Soriano, you know, for, mm-hmm. for helping me out in my journey with understanding the music and everything. Um, but yeah, I, for my, 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 my go to, I gotta go with Ali. I got to. Yeah, I was curious about that. Talk a little bit about your experience with, with John Soriano. Um, because I know you've done some, some work with the school down there in terms of the musicality and in some of the, the uh, classes that you have available, some of the courses, you actually have them break down and they're actually showing the instruments. So people yeah. that, you know, even if you're just hearing on the radio and you've never seen these instruments before, I think it's fascinating just being able to see the people who are playing the music and what those instruments look like and watching how it all comes together. So talk a little bit about your experience with uh, the Soriano family. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm a junkie when it comes to music. Like I, I just, I, I like knowing all the details. You know, again for me, that's it's just I like to nerd out with that type of stuff. Uh, so, being in DR, you know, and then seeing the live concerts, I, I don't really like. The, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of dancing as it is, which sounds odd because I teach dance. But that does sound odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People still don't believe me. Yeah, but I love music. Yeah. You know, and so especially like there's a live band. I will be like front row just staring at all the musicians just watching how they play just because it just fascinates me um, and then I'll try to like watch somebody play and like just specifically pick out that sound in in the in the full song with everybody playing you know and then I'll just go down the line you know musician by musician um, and so I, I feel that that has helped me peel apart all the different layers and being able to hear everything that's happening in the music has um, made my connection with music grow even deeper and stronger so now I feel a lot more songs because I'm able to hear everything and so with with Soriano um I had the pleasure of meeting him in 2010 you know and again just again warm people off you know him and his band from the island and you know just being in the hotel room before they would have a concert and they, they just like they're junkies they love to play music that's what they do and yeah, music junkies to clarify that yeah 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 right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. yeah <laughs> where we started room right yeah, now yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're music junkies so you know just watching the tech rehearsals and watching how they no no you got to do this you got to do that no no when I, after i do this then i want you to come in you know just how they put things together i'm like mm-hmm. wow it's, it's it's just it's great and then you know like i said we'll be in the hotel room we're leaving in a half hour okay cool and they're just just jamming and just playing their instruments. I was like, wow, this is, this is so fun to watch. But then, you know, when you're behind the scenes and you can really see it and you can really hear it, when they play live, you know, you're just able to hear everything so much cleaner because it's not one big pile of, you know, five instruments together. It's like five individual instruments playing, you know. Um, and so he, we did some work together. We, we did a CD together. Uh, more of a, a, a teaching instructional type CD and DVD. It's called Bachata Breakdown. Uh, you can find that on iTunes. And um, there's a CD version of that. And again, it's more of a timing CD. How people, again, we peel apart all the different instrumental layers one at a time um, to help you really identify, okay, this, this is what the instrument is. This is what it sounds like. And then, you know, now I'll try to go identify that instrument in the song. And then we made the DVD version of that to where you could actually see the musicians playing it. They explain how they play the music. Um, and then so that was, you know, really awesome for me uh, to be, because now again, I just have some, such a deeper understanding. It's a blessing and a curse because I can hear every little thing in the music. Right. <laughs> and then it, it gets distracting when I, when I try to dance because I'm like, oh, right, listen, listen, this part, listen, this part, wait, listen, listen, listen. Oh, did you hear that? You know, so it's... <laughs> But yeah, so but um, yeah, I'm definitely very fortunate to have met them and been able to work with them um, on the on the CD and the DVD. Yeah, and I even heard they gave you a shout out. I think in one of their songs, oh, I was yeah. listening to uh, <laughs> "Por Qué Me Botó," yeah. and uh, I'm like listening, listening. I'm like, wait a minute, what do you say, Chicago? Yeah. I was like, oh, Carlos Cinta. So he's like, yeah. "Para qué lo go, se Carlos Cinta." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got a shout out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that when when he showed it to me. I wasn't ready. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> So, but no, and that, and that's the one thing I, I really respect about him is that in a lot of his songs he gives he gives a lot of shout out to I mean people all over the world you know that that help him or his friends you know he's he's one of those guys that when he does a concert he will be the last person to leave he will take a picture with everybody sign an autograph for everybody I mean he he gen, genuinely appreciates his fans and so it, it's it's really awesome just to see him do that 
Um, so yeah, he, he just shouts out so many people. Like there's a guy, you know, like every time they visit a certain city, you know, they, he, he just invites all of them over to his house and cooks for them. Wow. You know, he's, he's a chef. Okay. He gives them a shout out in the song, you know, because he, he, they just appreciate that, mm-hmm. you know. So he, he's a really cool dude, man. Really, really good, humble guy. All right, Carlos, thank you so much for joining me. This has been a great conversation, and I hope that anyone out there is listening, whether or not you're a dancer or you just have a curiosity about, you know, the culture, that you really take the time out to do your own research and have your own experiences. And I think this is all part of that, really getting to know, you know, the people and not just the music itself, but the people that make the music. So I really appreciate your time and sharing your experience with us. Thank you. If folks want to get in touch with you, where can they find you on social media and uh, any events that you have coming up you want to let us know about? Yeah, so on Facebook, just Carlos Cinta, C-I-N-T-A, just my name. Um, I have Instagram. It is CC Bachata. Website is ccbachata.com. Um, you know, and then and, and there you can find you know just more information, more pictures about what I do, where I'll be at, which festivals. A great event that kind of ties in with this whole interview, you know, about you know being around the people of the culture and seeing it firsthand. Um, I participate in an event called Bachata Paradise, and that is in um, Las Terrenas in in DR. That happens um, at the end of May. What is that Memorial Weekend? Yeah, it's just yeah, Memor- Memorial Holiday. Um, it's it's a great event, honestly, because usually a lot of the the, the festivals you'll go, uh, it'll be, you'll be in a hotel. You never leave the hotel. You know all the parties, workshops, everything is inside the hotel, and and there's really no time to explore the city. You know, you could be in China, you wouldn't know the difference, you know, right. from the hotel that you're in. Um, but this one is a little bit different to where, you, you, of course, you know, you have your workshops, you know, at, at the place. But just, you know, for example, like Monday, you'll go here and party at this club with the local people. Tuesday, you go here and party at this other local club. So really, the only tourists are the people that are involved in that event. And it's really, like I said, it's, it's a great cultural immersion. So not only do you... You know, you go see live concerts and you go to, you know, the local, you know, discos or the local clubs. Um, but there's also excursions, you know, you there's beach parties. There are, you go, you know, horseback riding, there's waterfalls, there's natural pools and things that you go to, you know, to really experience the island, experience the culture. So that is it's definitely a great, great experience called BachataParadise.com. You can look that up. And make sure that you jump on that quickly because I know that's coming up at the end of May. So if you're interested in Bachata Paradise, definitely check that out as well. All right. Thank you, Carla. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to find out more about Bachata Paradise, go to our show notes page at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash 19. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash 19. And you'll get all the information about Bachata Paradise, which is happening from May 23rd to June 2nd, 2019. Now, if you're listening to this after May 23rd, 2019, and you missed the boat this year, not to worry, the event will be happening again in 2020. So if you're interested, go to the website that we have linked in the show notes and make sure you sign up for the list so you'll be notified about the next event. We also have links to the artists that Carlos mentioned in our conversation, so you can find their music if you'd like to hear some authentic bachata from the Dominican Republic. As always, let us know if you like this episode by leaving us a rating and review in iTunes. It really means a lot to us to know that you're listening, and I'd love to hear your feedback. So click the link in the episode description or on the show notes page. You can also follow us on Instagram at Learn Spanish Colin Salsa to give us any comments or suggestions for future episodes. That is it for this episode of Learn Spanish Con Salsa. And as always, I hope something that you heard today will take you one step closer from being a Spanish beginner to fully bilingual. Hasta luego. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.